you can see I have worked in a slot here for the batteries to go into and it'll fit almost perfectly three AAA batteries. But since we're going to be wiring them in series and not parallel, we kind of have to do some funny things. So we want the power to come out this side and the ground to come out this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these three batteries and I'm going to flip this one upside down. So the ground is here, power is here, I connect these two and then connect these two. And we're good to go. Now this is where our copper tape will come in handy. Okay, so for this first little bit, it's going to wrap around that corner right there. And I've, I've put a couple of slots there for the power and ground to come out. So for the first part, we basically only want to make contact with the positive terminal on the third battery. So we don't need a very big piece of copper tape. The best part about copper tape is it's tape, so the back of it is sticky. And to test this out, you don't even really need to take the tape off to begin with. And this is where your needle nose pliers or tweezers will come in handy. Now we'll need another tiny piece to connect these two. And now we'll do the same for the other side, only we want to connect these two and then feed this to the outside. Now you want to make sure you leave a little bit of a gap in between the connections for the batteries. Otherwise, they'll overlap and short circuit. Then we just need the other piece for the ground. And this can just slide down here like so. Something to keep in mind is that 3D printers don't always print the same. Sometimes the tolerances can be a little bit off, depending on your settings and the environment you're printing in. So these contacts need to be pretty tight against the battery, otherwise you're not going to get a reliable connection. So test it out, and if you need to, pad the back of the tape with some paper. Okay, so now that we've got the power supply wired up, let's move to the breadboard and hook up the LEDs. So hook the resistors into the power line and then somewhere else on the breadboard. And with these specific LEDs, the longer leg is the power. So I'll stick that alongside, or I'll stick that in the same row as the resistor and then the ground into the ground rail on the breadboard. So really, that's basically our circuit. We just need to connect it to power and ground. So it's a very, very easy project to do, electronics-wise. Now I like to color code my wires a little bit, and I always use black as ground, and I'll either use white or red as power. And this, I just happen to have white. 
So I've got my terminals for the power supply sticking out here. So let's see how well it actually is doing. So I'll just take the power and hold it on over here. And I'll, I'll rotate it slightly so you can see. And then I'll just take the ground and connect it by hand. And it looks like it actually works pretty well. The LEDs are coming on, they're staying on, and they're not flickering at all. So I take that as a win. So next, we actually need to start inserting the electronics in there and soldering them. And in order to find out where the LEDs need to go, I'll just put this, I'll put the lid on, and then I take a pencil or a marker or something just to mark it, go through, and just mark a little bit in the spots where the LEDs need to go. And that'll help us line it up. So then we can take this, and you can look right here, they have, all right, I put in a little stopper for the lid, so that basically just means we need to have the LED base flush with that. And that'll give us just under half of the length of these legs. So now I'm going to take the LED legs and bend them so they'll fit in here. But you have to be careful because they will break off if you're not. Okay, so now I'm going to take the LEDs, spread the legs apart just a little bit. Then I'm going to take the resistors and wrap one of the legs around the LED's power leg. And that will make it easier to solder together later. Now I'm going to orient these to make the wires flow just a little bit better. Okay, so now I'm going to get my soldering iron ready. Now I recommend testing along the way just because it's really easy to mess up on a component and then get done with it and then it just doesn't work and then you have to kind of dismantle it to figure out what you did wrong. So to test it, I'm just going to go back to the breadboard. Yeah, looks like that one's good. So I'll hook up the rest of them. And that one's good. Looks like these are all good to go.
As you can see here, I've got the power terminal from the batteries out here, and it's connected to one of these pins on the bottom. And then I'll take this pin and connect it to the power of the LEDs. And basically all this rocker switch does is allows current to flow through. So if you have it on, current will flow from one pin to the other. If it's not, or if it's off, it will break and current will not flow. So it's essentially just breaking the circuit. If you want to test each step of the way, um, each of these LEDs will work individually in this setup. So just make sure it's connected to power somehow. Touch this to ground and then touch an LED and boom, it'll come on. And I wasn't holding it very well. So if I actually get that held on there. You can see it's a nice steady light. And that's a good sign. If there's any flick or anything like that, you might have a weak solder joint. So I've got the rest of my wires cut. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna tin these up and then I'm gonna wire the grounds together. And then before I do the final one, I'm gonna shut off the circuit just because it's never a good idea to have running electricity when you're soldering things. Okay, so now all the soldering is done, and as you can see, I can flip the switch and power comes on. No flickering or anything, so that's a good sign.